The Palestinian National Security Forces, known as the NSF, were set up after the Oslo Accords in 1993. With the help of United States training, they sometimes work hand in hand with Israeli forces to counter the mutual threat of Hamas militants. But they say their hands are tied by the Israelis, who don't trust them, and a Palestinian people who see them as stooges of the Israeli regime and accuse them of frequent human rights violations. So with things really escalating badly in the Gaza Strip and clashes all over Israel, things have been relatively calm right now in the West Bank, which is typically an area that's a big flashpoint. We wanted to see why that is, so we got some special access to the Palestinian security forces, and we're going to go tag along with them on patrol. So what's it been like here since this, this phase of the conflict has sort of started? يعني طول النهار مع طول الليل تفجيرات تبواب اعتقالات شلوا عمل الأجهزة الأمنية بالكامل فكان وضع كتير سيء هاي أول نقطة تفتيش إسرائيلي هاي هي المنطقة منطقة الاحتكاك ما بين الفلسطينيين والإسرائيليين الشارع اللي واقف فيه حاليا الجب هو تحت السيادة الفلسطينية والشارع هذاك ما بعد الرصيف هو تحت السيادة الإسرائيلية بيجوا شبان فلسطين بيضربوا هنا حجار بيطلعوا الإسرائيليين بشكل يعني عنيف وبشكل الإسرائيليين بيحاولوا قدر الإمكان بطريقة أو بأخرى ينهوا وجود أي لأي فلسطين هان من أجل فتح المجال للمستوطنين أنهم يستولوا على المنطقة بالكامل So what we're about to go see is another one of the minor flashpoints The interesting thing about this one is that the Israeli troops are sort of stationed right over here so the NSF can't get too close there are rules about that in for me, I think. So, so this is, you can't go any further than here. You know, from everything you've said, it sounds like there's a lot of frustration that you have towards the Israeli forces as well. So does that make it hard for you to come in when the people here are expressing their frustrations, even if they're throwing rocks, even if they're, if they're engaged in clashes? Is, is it hard for you to come in and break that up because you understand where they're coming from? Yeah. <laughs> بيعمل عندهم حال متصل لأنه مباشرة أو قبل لا نصل بيكون الإسرائيلي مش موجود في المكان وهذا بيعمل نوع من الهدوء والأريحية عند المواطن الفلسطيني. What about the militant operatives of of groups like Hamas that are active in this city? I mean, what is your what is your sort of operations against them like? والله هذا مفضل من السؤال يعني ما فيش عنا إشي اسمه أذرع هنا يعني لا بس هيك سؤال بفضل تسألي له إشي أعلى يعني. So it's pretty clear from talking to the NSF that they're really they're caught between a rock and a hard place. Um, our guy wouldn't even come this close to the Israeli tower that's right here because they're not allowed to engage the Israelis. So when the Israelis do incursions and arrest Palestinians, th there's nothing they can do. They're pretty much powerless. That became especially clear when three Israeli teenagers were kidnapped and murdered. In a massive show of force, IDF soldiers raided the Hebron area looking for suspects, eventually rounding up more than 700 Palestinians. We went to meet a local activist, Khaled Amira, a man who Palestinian authorities have accused of being a Hamas affiliate. He said he would bring us to meet a family affected by the crackdown. Hebron uh, is thought to be a Hamas city uh, by the Israelis. As far as the Israelis are concerned, Palestinians are guilty until proven innocent. And was it, I mean, wasn't it before this, this latest episode, it seemed like Hamas was sort of losing their support base? Hamas is now perceived by the bulk of uh, the Palestinian society as uh, uh, being victimized by the Israelis. Hamas never admitted responsibility for the killing of the three Israeli settlers. Uh, but they didn't condemn it either. No, no. Well, no Palestinian would condemn it. Uh, no given... Palestinian would condemn the, the, the kidnapping and murder of three teenagers? Well, it's not like that, you know. Um, given what the Israelis have been doing to the Palestinians. <laughs> On the 20th of June, mm -hmm. uh, an Israeli force raided this area. They claimed they came under a volley of stones. Uh, and uh, they shot his son. How have you been coping with everything? 
ما فيش قام في الدنيا بهون علي انا ابني شفته كامل رصاصته في صدره اجاني كامل وودعته وشفته خمسه الا خمسه سمعنا صوت اطلاق النار طبعا مش باب الدار أه لفوق شوي بحكي انا الله يعين قلب امي اللي استشهد في عندي بنت صغيره اللي بتحكي لي ماما محمد بط من الشباك طبعا قوم راح يتفرج زي زي اي طفل صغير يعني عمره 14 سنه شو رايح بحامل سلاح حامل سكين مثلا مش باقي ما في يعني ما في داعي لانه الرصاصه حيه تقتله What was the environment like here uh, at the start of this crackdown? كسروا الإجزاز، كسروا المطابخ، الكنب سطحوه بسكاكين، كسروا الدنيا في الدور. تخر إنه ابني كان أول شهيد في الانتفاضة الثانية. If the complicated relationship between Palestinian security forces and the Israelis wasn't enough of a flashpoint, then add this: an ultra-religious community of Israeli settlers are living smack in the middle of Hebron's 600,000 Palestinians. One of the settlers, Mordechai Hellinger, agreed to show us around. So this is um, the Jewish community here. The kids, we don't really have that much place to grow. I want to show you the, uh, the contrast of things that go on here. Okay, it looks like any normal playground around the world. Yeah. Right? Okay, now look up. There's a soldier up there stopping Arabs from throwing down rocks, glass bottles, molten cocktails. There's a fence there blocking the rocks from coming down. Sometimes that is not enough. Unfortunately, the Arabs practice with this a lot. But to quote the Hamas on this one, not to quote myself, they say that they glorify death as much as we glorify life. And I can kind of agree with them on that one. Jews only have access to 3% of the city. That tiny little sliver. Uh, that's the only place where you can go. So what that does to this place is that you give the entire surrounding areas over to a uh, terrorist organization. What we get back from day one is terror raining down from those hills. You sometimes take out your garbage, you duck not to get hit in the head by a bullet. But there's also been terror attacks from the Jewish community on the Arab community here. I'll tell you the difference. Okay. If you look at terrorists from the Arab side, they glorify terror. Well, you have the same thing on the other side. These kids in Gaza that are six, seven years old, they've lived with, what, three okay. Israeli military operations, and they're not okay. guilty. Okay. They're not guilty. I, okay, first of okay. all, um, it's horrible what's going on in Gaza. I feel bad for them. We want to have them continue life as best as possible. But unfortunately, how many times have Israel given up for the Palestinian Authority? We pulled out of Gaza. What did we get back? Tens of thousands of rockets. We give them ammunition, it's used against us. We do that, it's used against us. You understand what's going on here? When you have such a thing, it's hard to come to peace. Clashes between the IDF and the young men of Hebron are fairly routine. But things have been even more heated since the killing of three young Israelis. We went to see firsthand. <laughs> So we're out in Hebron tonight. Uh, prayers have just ended. There's a gathering, uh, a lot of young people for pro Fatah, and they're headed right now to the gate that we're at earlier today that leads to the Israeli neighborhood. <laughs> So we were all set to have a nice peaceful evening, but as we were leaving, we came upon some burning tires, some young kids out on the street throwing rocks, and we're gonna go check out what the, uh, the standoff is. Well, just stay right here. Oh, shit. This is another one of the exits from Hebron. We're actually in the town next to it right now. We couldn't get there because the soldiers were there. But it looks like things are heating up here. We've been seeing ambulances, three of them right now. They're firing, they're firing, they're firing, they're firing. They're firing at ambulances. Fuck it. We just got an update from a local journalist. He told us that seven people here have been injured. Uh, four, he says, by live bullets, and three, he says, by plastic bullets. Israeli forces then opened fire from about 300 yards away. As Israeli forces clash with Palestinian youth, the Palestinian security forces are nowhere to be found. You know, stuff like this is routine. It does happen, and it just continues on and on and on.